Hi guys, in today's tutorial, we're going to be talking about creating splines using our SolidWorks Sketch Tools. Now, spline tool can be found located up here. So, just like the other tools that we treated in previous tutorial videos, we know that selecting all the tools, we are able to see guideline icons as to how the tools work around this section of the screen. At the future manager tree area and then you might be asking that what are splines splines are used to create irregular geometries that cannot otherwise be created using our normal sketch tools so what i mean is a spline can be drawn to any shape so if you look at the icon here it also simply depicts that this is not a shape in particular but then you can use your solid or sketch tools to create any kind of geometry that you so desire so over to the two select on this and then there are three types of splines in which here we're going to talk about just two we have the normal spline which is also interpolation spline too and then we also have the style spline which i can call the control vertex spline all right and then we also have the equation driven curve so the equation driven curve simply works like the sine and cosine charts that we are accustomed to so it simply demands us to insert our equations and then the system automatically draws the curve for us so since we do not have an equation here we're not going to treat with that but we'll just go with these two so beginning with the spline now the interpolation spline this tool works really simple all it does is when i select my first point and select my second point the two or the sketch passes through every point that i so select i notice this now if you look at this we are able to define the shape of the spline based on the direction or the location of our next point so let me remove all of this and do this again select my spline in this case i've selected my first point the second now i notice something here the point at which i'm going to pick my third um spline point is actually going to make a lot of difference towards the curve or the curvature of our spline so one thing we just need to know is we have total control over the spline too However, it is advisable not to create too many points as it only com complicates the spline. At this point, now we have created this spline and then we are able to edit. So these asterisks that we see here at all of these points are called our spline fit. By selecting on any of these, I'm able to move the spline to change its curvature. So also selecting on the end point, I'm able to move this spline to change its curvature. And if you also notice that on selecting this end fit, you notice these arrows that come up. And these are also used to edit the curvature of our spline. And then if I, if you notice here, zooming in, you notice that this arrow is translational, while this is kind of rotational. So in this case, if I select on this arrow here and drag, you notice the changes it's making to the spline. I'm not able to move this left and right, just towards the same direction it's moving. Okay. And then also, if I select on this arrow that seem like they are rotating, I'm also able to alter the shape of this spline. So just like I said, we have total control over the spline tools, and then we can also apply the same at all over all other spline fit points. So what about if we need a spline fit here, whereas there is none here? So what we do is we select on the spline by right clicking, and then we have a couple of tools here that can be used. We will not go over every one of them. And then we'll pick just the major ones so first of all we had tangency control 
this particular icon or this particular tool we see here is actually called the tangency control so i've demonstrated the clicking the rotating and the pulling so if i select on this point to drop on you notice that the same thing we had here has been created here so editing this is just the same way as the others that were edited before so this is what we call our tangency control all right and then right clicking on this again we have the add curvature control so the add curvature control is used to create like a radius that defines the curvature of a particular part of this spline. So selecting on this point, you notice what we have here. It has both the tangency control and this radius symbol, the jog radius symbol here. Now selecting on this and dragging, you see the difference is creating. Now despite the fact that this is a spline, you notice that it's increasing the radius of this making it far larger than what it is right now but then it is still tangential to this line if i undo this ctrl z now you notice that the radius has come back into this form now what we did was dragging this was increasing the radius and in so doing is also changing the curvature of this plane so that is our curvature control and then we have also the insert spline point. Remember I spoke about all of these asterisks that we have here. So in the same way we can select an insert spline point, escape where we can pick on the points and drag to alter the shape of the spline. Likewise, simplify spline. Now what this tool does for us is, after creating our splines, the software is able to calculate a simplified mode of the spline too. So the software is able to calculate the curvature of the spline too. And notice the highlighted spline part here. Selecting on OK moves the spline to take the part of the highlights, just like this. All right doing this again then we have the show spline handles which is simply just showing all of these functions that we have here display control polygon which is simply showing the polygons that control the splines we have show inflection points show minimum radius convert to style spline i remember we spoke about two different types of spline which is this normal interpolation spline and the style spline this so we can actually convert this spline into a style spline from here convert to style spline and you notice the change so this is what we call the control polygon just like i'm having issues selecting this okay so just like the display control polygon, if you notice it's the same thing that was showing when we selected convert to style spline. So the difference within this is, is actually very a very very small difference. The only difference is, at this point when we're creating this spline, every point selected was the point that the spline passed through. But using the style spline, the points selected are not necessarily passed through but only define the positions of the control polygon. Now you notice this and this. So this is point selected, but the spline doesn't necessarily pass through this point, neither did it pass through this. So just as we are able to drag this now and edit the curvature of the spline, in the same way with this control polygon that I've been shown, I can select on any of the vertices here and edit also the curvature of the spline. So also right clicking on this, convert to style spline, and okay, I can select on any of these points and edit the curvature of the spline. So this is the spline too. You must note that we need to be very careful with the level of steepness and curvature that we are creating because when we are making our designs, 
manufacturability is always very important to consider. So even though we have full control over the supply too, it's also important to place the manufacturability into consideration when using our splines. So you can go ahead to try this and then I'll see you in the next tutorial where we'll be talking about creating our ellipse, parabola, conic and partial ellipse.